Hi, students, and welcome to today's lesson. I'm Ms. Lee. Today, we will continue investigating the question, why do some animals live in groups? Are you ready? Grab your pencil and your science journal, and let's get started. You know, I've been thinking about a classroom as an environment. I wonder how would we describe a classroom environment? We could say that a classroom has lots of different parts, like posters on the wall, desks for the students, and a desk for the teachers. Oh, and speaking of students and teachers, they're parts of the classroom too. The parts of the classroom work together in this way. A classroom is a system. Remember, a system is made up of different components that interact and depend on one another. The components of a classroom depend on one another for the classroom to work properly. If one part changes, the other parts will be affected. Let's look at an example where a classroom functions as a system. Imagine, on a Tuesday morning, you find out that a nearby school is going to be closed for the next few days. Your school's principal has asked your class to host a class from that school until it reopens. I wonder, how will all these extra students affect the class? What do you think? Well, you will have more students in the classroom, but you have only enough textbooks and supplies for your regular class. When more students arrive, there won't be enough for everyone. How could working as a group help you deal with this change in your classroom system? I know, you could rearrange the desk. If you place each new student's desk next to the desk of a student in the original class, you can share textbooks. But what about school supplies such as pencils? Hmm, what do you think? I know, maybe you could all agree to bring extra pencils from home to share. Because you work together, you can now get your schoolwork done and learn more about science. You identify ways you could cope with the change in the classroom system. To cope means to deal successfully with a difficult situation. I wonder, do any systems in nature act like our classroom system? Do animals that experience a change in their system find ways to cope with the change? Look at these interesting creatures. There they are. These animals are called meerkats. They live in groups on the southern tip of Africa. Meerkats groups live in burrows under the ground. They have to leave their burrows to look for insects and plants to eat. Like a classroom system, the meerkat system has lots of parts. What are the parts of the meerkat system? The meerkat system includes the meerkats, the meerkats burrow, the meerkats food, and the area around the burrows where the meerkats forage for food. Let's watch a video clip of some meerkats in action. What do you notice? Hey! What's this meerkat doing? It's standing up tall and looking around. What do you wonder? I wonder whether this meerkat has a certain job. Maybe this meerkat is acting as a lookout for the other meerkats. Is that what you were thinking? As it turns out, this meerkat is acting as a sentinel. A sentinel is like a lookout or a guard. The sentinel watches for predators such as snakes or hawks. What about the other meerkats? Do they also have roles? They seem to be searching for something. What do you think? While the sentinel meerkat is on lookout duty, the other meerkats search for insects, plants, and other food. These meerkats are called foragers. When the sentinel meerkat sees a predator, it gives a warning cry to alert the other meerkats. The warning cry sounds like this. As the predator gets closer, the cry becomes more urgent. That almost sounds like an alarm, doesn't it? And as the predator gets even closer, the meerkat makes a completely different noise. Wow, that sounds a lot like a dog barking. 
When the foragers hear these warning sounds from the sentinel, what do you think they do? That's right, they run away. So the question we're asking today is, how does living in a group help animals cope with change? Let's use that question to think more about our meerkats. How did the meerkats cope with the change in the system? What do you think? I noticed that to start, a predator came into the system, so I'll write that down. And how did the meerkats cope with that change? The sentinel meerkats barked to warn the foragers and they all ran away to safety. Amazing! I wonder whether other animal groups cope with change in similar ways. Let's find out. What are we looking at now? A pile of soil? Well, yeah, actually. But there's something else in there too. I'll give you a hint. This is a photograph of one of the world's largest animal groups. This is a fire ant mound. Let's learn more about this system. A group of fire ants lives in a nest of tunnels dug underground. The nest begins in a mound of loose soil above the ground. One evening, a storm destroys the mound as rainwater washes away the soil. Over the next several days, the ants work together to rebuild the mound. Let's look at the text we just read. What was the change in the ant system? Let's find evidence in the text. Point to the part of the story with the text that shows evidence of the change in the system. I see a change right here. A storm destroys the mound, the ant's mound. An important part of their nest was destroyed. How did the fire ants cope with the change? What about the ants work together to rebuild the mound? By working as a group, the ants could repair their nest. Let's write this information down to help us remember. The fire ant system changed when their mound was destroyed, but they coped by working together to rebuild it. Let's look at another animal group. Did you know that a group of dolphins is called a pod? How do you think this pod of dolphins will cope with a change to their system? A group of dolphins is attacked by a shark. One dolphin is injured. The dolphin cannot swim to the surface of the water to get air. Several other dolphins in the group dive beneath the injured dolphin and lift it up so that it can breathe. Which part of the story shows a change in the system? Point to the screen. Here is the change. A dolphin was injured by a shark. And what about how the dolphin coped? This is the part of the story where the dolphin group worked together to lift up the injured dolphin. That's how the pod coped with the change. The dolphin system changed when one of the dolphins was injured. The other dolphin coped with the change by lifting the injured dolphin so that it could breathe. We've seen some ways groups of bear cats, fire ants, and dolphins can cope with the change to their system. One of your tasks after this lesson will be to identify the ways groups of chimpanzees and baboons cope with change. In the last few lessons, we've learned that animals live in groups to find food and to defend themselves. And today we learned that living in groups also helps animals cope with change. Let's add this update to our anchor chart. We can also add to our last update. Now it will say some animals live in groups that help members survive. Living in groups can help animals get food, defend themselves, and cope with change. Today we discussed short-term changes in an animal group system. But what if an animal group faced a long-term change? What do you think would happen if an animal group's entire environment changed? For example, what would happen to butterflies if the temperature in their environment suddenly became very cold? In upcoming lessons, we will begin to explore the question, what happens to organisms when the environment changes? Let's review your tasks for today. First, identify the change in the chimpanzees and baboon system. Second, answer the question about animal groups coping with change. Third, fill in the blanks to update the anchor chart. Hi students and welcome to today's lesson. This is the Concept 1 Conceptual Checkpoint. I'm Miss Lee. And I'm Ms. Albina. 
Are you ready? Grab your pencil and let's get started. We observed various animal groups over the last few lessons. Today you will observe a different animal group and explain how these animals get what they need to survive. This photograph shows a group of elephants. Take some time to observe the photograph. Now let's watch a video of an elephant group. What do you notice? Let's watch that one more time. Respond to the following prompt. How do elephants get what they need to survive in their environment? As you respond, remember to think about the characteristics of elephants the elephant's environment, and how you think elephants might interact with one another in a group.